Hello and welcome. You're watching us here on uh, Your Stocks. This is a show where we answer all your stocks and investment related queries. We come to you live from the CNBC TV 18 News Center. Importantly, the market has accelerated its fall. And as we speak, the Nifty is way below the 20 day moving average, way below 17,600. 17,550 is here at the low point. The Sensex is sitting with a cut of almost 1,000 points. And the mid caps are uh, faring much worse with a cut of almost 3%. Uh, we have seen almost, uh, you know, six stocks decline for one advance. So we have about 2,700 stocks which are in the red for about 900 stocks which are in the green on uh, the Bombay Stock Exchange. Whereas uh, on the National Stock Exchange, we do have about 420 stocks advancing as against 2,400 stocks declining. As you can see, the story of the day uh, right in front of you in two lines. We started with more advancers than decliners. It was actually split right down the middle. Thereafter, we saw the big decline that came by, and that has only widened with uh, the gap between the decliners and advancing stocks uh, only widening, and uh, is at its widest point as the market is at its lowest point in today's trading session. What we do is uh, we will first, uh, you know, welcome our guests. We have Shaina Mukadam as well as uh, Sachidanand Uttekar joining in to answer all our viewers' queries. But before we get to answering viewers' queries, Sachi, you know, we were seeing some amount of recovery from the lows, but that wouldn't have happened every time, right? It couldn't have been so easy. At some point, the dip would not have been bought. And it looks like today is that day. Well, absolutely. I think, uh, uh, Mangalam, uh, we, even we were expecting a decline, but uh, we were not expecting a decline towards, uh, you know, 17,500, 550 kind of a mark. We were expecting that 17,700, where the 20-day exponential moving average is placed. Probably, you know, that would be a good level wherein uh, some longs could be committed. But the extent of the fall has been surprising. In fact, if you look at the weekly structure, the weekly structure has started uh, getting more sideways now. Uh, the Nifty has again uh, returned back to its five-week exponential moving average, which is placed at 17,540. And uh, as we are talking, you know, it is... Uh, at that particular base. So it will be very crucial how it responds to this particular level. And in case if there's a recovery, that recovery has to happen in the next one hour or so. So we are not expecting a closing below this particular level of 17,540. In case if that happens, then probably we may see this uh, decline getting further uh, in the next week as well. So immediate level, I think 17,540, that is the level which should be washed out for. And in case uh, if we return back, then probably we may see a closing somewhere close to 17,600, 630. Take that point. What's your uh, prognosis on the Nifty Bank, which up until now was, uh, you know, trying to be a little more resilient, but under the weight of the market's decline, now it has also, you know, accelerated its fall. It's currently sitting at the cut of about a percent and a half as against the Nifty, which is 1.8 percent lower. Well, I think uh, uh, there is a lot of resilience which has been displayed by Nifty Bank, and uh, it's not, uh, right now it has been displaying that particular uh, stra, you know uh, shade in the so from the last three trading sessions. Even right now, it has responded uh, to the five-day exponential moving average. It has just managed to you know breach that particular level, and it is residing there. But immediate basis, I think the crucial support for Nifty Bank is that 40,500. In case if that particular level is breached, then probably we may see this corrective getting uh, you know, extended further. But as of now, I think Nifty Bank is much more uh, better placed. And we may see it getting stabilized uh, within this area of 41,000 uh, you know, on the higher side. And uh, 40,500 should hold on for the next couple of trading sessions. All right, we take that point. As of now, you know, wherever there were profits, they have been uh, uh, taken lower. We have Bharat Forge, which is down about 5.5%. Uh, we have uh, India Bulls Housing Finance, which is at the low point of trade. Berger Payne, Speedy Light, both these stocks have been outperforming in the past. Uh, we saw some declines out there. Indian hotels as well. The stock was uh, notorious for being hitting uh, record highs on a daily basis and is currently now at the low point with a cut of almost 4% from the top. Uh, so that's how the markets have behaved. And we here on Your Stocks will tell you how to behave when the markets behave this way. Let's uh, welcome our first caller. We have Prakash Jadwani calling us from Vadodara. Prakash, good afternoon. You're making a serious amount of profit in... Uh, MRPL, what's uh, your query? Good afternoon, Mangram, and good afternoon to the reporters. Uh, I want to uh, invest uh, into MRPL. I had bought 
for 200 to 500 shares uh, at the IPO, which I am holding in. But I want to uh, top up or add 10,000 shares. I, I want to know if the price of MRPL is going to correct from here with this current fall and will it where will it get supported, whether 65 or up to 50. Wait. And then uh, this this is what I want to know technically. And Sh since I'm, I'm wanting to uh, uh, sort of invest for short to medium term, I want to know the price targets, whether it will reach to 150. This is qu technical uh, query. And then fundamentally, I want to know whether there is any change happening in M MRPL with respect to some expansion. All right, hang in then. Ha or, uh, yeah, Prakash, I, I get your point. Yes, uh, you, just a couple of questions, uh, follow-up questions. You said you invested in the IPO for MRPL, right? What was your price? Yeah, I am price? a small quantity. I, 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 want, I want to add up 10,000 shares more. Okay, you want to add 10,000 shares and you haven't uh, held 10,000 shares so far. Is that correct? No, no. Yes, correct. I want to add 10,000, but I want to add it up when the prices have bottomed out at 65 or 50. Okay, and uh, you know what was uh, interesting is you said short to medium term and then you gave a target of 150 uh, or okay. rather an aspiration of 150. I don't think short to medium term you would have a target of uh, a certain stock doubling, but be that as it may, we'll, we'll pose that question no, to Sachidanan. It is, it, is a, it is a selective pick, so I want to know if there is any materialistic change okay. going to happen Fine. technically and fundamentally. So we'll, we'll ask that to Sachidanand uh, for the technical levels, etc. But Shaina, your thoughts on MRPL? Uh, do you think uh, something is changing out there for him to be wanting to buy 10,000 shares? No, I think, uh, you know, uh, you should avoid, uh, enjoy the ride that you've got from your uh, IPO. But as of now, uh, don't uh, I don't think one should uh, extrapolate the first quarter numbers that we saw. Uh, I think there are a couple of negatives that are now likely to, you know, uh, keep, the, keep the stock under pressure for some time, which includes, of course, uh, you know, the government uh, is putting specific duties on windfall profits that they enjoyed in the first quarter. Uh, secondly, I think food oil prices are weakening. Uh, and it is, of course, the PSU. It is part of the ONGC, HPCL uh, group of stocks. So it's the holding over there. So I think, uh, you know, to be very aggressive and expect 150 is absolutely, uh, you know, not uh, something that you should aspire for. And as, for, as far as the decline that he's talking about, I don't think that, you know, it's going to fall to 50. But even at 65, I don't see any reason why you should be buying it as of now. All right. Uh, Sachidanan, your thoughts? Uh... Uh, Mangalam, I think uh, uh, Mr. Prakash is well versed with his levels. I think he's following the trend. Hmm. And if you look at the trend for the last uh, eight to nine weeks, you know, there is absolutely nothing that has happened on the price action. It has been oscillating within the range of 77 on the higher side and 67 on the lower side. If you look at the weekly and the monthly structure, uh, the level that is coinciding is around 58 levels, uh, which is the uh, 200 weekly exponential moving average when it comes to weekly charts. So probably in case uh, if this particular uh, range is breached, then the immediate fall towards uh, 59 would be a good idea wherein he can hunt for a bottom. As of now, uh, we have already seen an accelerated move from the level of 30 to 130. And after that, uh, the correction has been very gradual and it is in tandem. So probably he can you know, strategize in a particular way wherein he can enter the stock when the momentum starts getting generated. That will be above 77 levels on a breakout. Else, so probably he can take a punt once the decline is certain and 59, 58 level has been achieved. Then probably he can, you know, uh, start, uh, you know, getting into the counter. As of now, the structure uh, on the larger degree is not that weak, but uh, in the short term, it has been oscillating. So probably he has to wait and watch for these levels and re-enter. All right, take that point. Uh... I hope that answers your question, uh, uh, Sir Prakash, uh, you know, with regards to MRPL. Uh, just keep an eye out on the market. Well, well you can't, uh, you know, lose sight of the way there has been a big decline. And uh, the other thing that has spiked when, you know, everything falls with the ferocity that it has, India VIX, the intraday chart of that one should come up for you. It's up almost 9 or percent, closing on that 20 mark. So that is something we will continue to monitor as we move towards the end of uh, today's trading session as well and this trading week as a whole. The next query comes in from Uti. Arshi Ansari writes to us. She holds about 25 shares of Adani ports purchased at between 900, uh, uh, purchased at 900 rupees. Uh, we have 50 shares that she holds at uh, 175 of Apollo tires as well. She's making small profits in both her investments, wants to know whether to remain invested or book profits and exit. Uh, 
China, both the tire stocks as well as Adani ports have been doing well in the last couple of trading sessions. We did see a few brokerage notes come by on Adani ports and the tire space as well. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, should our viewer continue to hold? Yeah, I think she, she, she can continue holding, ride uh, both these stocks uh, higher. Basically, Adani Ports, as you know, is targeting 20% plus volume growth. They're already doing it. And uh, it's one of the cheapest uh, Adani group stocks in terms of valuation. I would continue holding. The business is pretty strong. And as far as uh, Apollo Tires goes, uh, they are actually benefiting from a lower raw material cost. At the same time, I think the stock may consolidate for some more time at current levels because uh, gas prices and availability of gas in Europe is an issue. Uh, but I would, uh, I think both are decent stocks to hold for the medium to longer term. Sachidan, your thoughts? Well, uh, the structure for both the stocks is good. In fact, Adani Ports uh, recently, uh, you know, gave a breakout from a weak pattern formation on its monthly scale. So definitely, you know, uh, this particular stock should be in your portfolio. As of now, the trending level uh, uh, is around 840 where you have to place your stop losses. And the pattern is uh, exhibiting a target of around 1090 where I think she should uh, review her position. When it comes to Apollo tires, again, the trend has been very confident. We have recently seen a good surge in most of the tire stocks. The momentum has been good. As of now, 260 is the level below which uh, the entire sequence could change. So she should place her stop losses at 260. And on the higher side, the immediate target is around 320 followed by 370. All right. Uh, hang in there, Shahina, as well as Sachi. We take a short break, come back, answer more of our viewer queries on the other side. Stay tuned. Well, some of the financials are now uh, taking it on the chin. We have Bajaj Twins, both Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finserve at the low point of trade. And then we have a couple of high beta financials as well. Case in point, something like in India Bulls Housing Finance, the intraday, intraday chart comes up for you. You see a big one uh, sharp swoop that is taking place on India Bulls Housing Finance down almost 6%. And uh, the decline has been vertical. Most of the gains, uh, most of the cuts rather, have come by in just the last few odd minutes. We are here. Still with us, uh, we have uh, Shaina Mukadam as well as Sachidanand Uttekar to answer all your stocks and investment-related queries. Uh, Rahul Jain calls us from Bengaluru. Rahul, uh, hope you're doing fine. And uh, what do you have investments in? So uh, I'm holding a uh, uh, 20,000 uh, quantity of Fokan Bank at the levels of 260. So what should be my next move? So should I consider invested or should I book my losses? Well, Sachi, we have seen big, big moves in a lot of the PSU banks. In fact, the PSU bank index itself was at a record high. He's uh, losing some money in Canada Bank. He's got decent quantity as well. What do you think he should be doing after, you know, sitting on a drawdown of almost 20 rupees from his buy price? Well, uh, I think uh, the trend here could only weaken once uh, 220 is breached. So as of now, you know, uh, if you look at the recovery, the recovery has been smart. We have already seen a run-up from 160 levels towards 260 within a span of almost uh, seven, eight uh, uh, trading weeks. So I think uh, the immediate uh, elevated base is somewhere close to 220. So he should hold on to his uh, investments. Probably, you know, uh, it will be a good idea to accumulate uh, uh, more positions one, uh, once uh, two, 230, 235 zone is achieved. So probably he can add on to his position with a stop loss at 220 and review his positions once uh, 270 uh, levels has been achieved in the next couple of uh, you know months time. So as of now, uh, he should not panic. Uh, the declines could be bought in. Uh, we still have room till 235. The stop loss should be placed at 220. All right, take that point. Uh, well, uh, you know, gains are being taken off wherever one can find them and a lot of these long positions are being unwound case in point the tire stocks they were the toast of the trading session in the earlier part of the week now mrf is down seven percent a whopping seven percent on that counter which is a heavy counter apollo tires is the other one which is at the low point of trade with a cut of almost six odd percent then the cement pack uh, india cements ambuja cements we've seen big gains in both these stocks up 13 percent this week itself but today are uh, seeing a sell-off with some ferocity. And similar is the case for all these Adani Group stocks, which have been on a tear over the last uh, few months or so. Adani Transmission, for instance, is now down 4%. Adani Wilmar down 3.5%. Adani Green is at the low point, And so is uh, Adani Power 
and all the other Adani group stocks. Basically, anything and everything which saw a big rally in the last few trading sessions is seeing some profit being taken off or some long positions being unwound. Uh, we have Tanushri Gupta writing to us from Kolkata. She holds about 30 shares of Kajaria Ceramics at uh, 945 odd rupees, currently sitting with a gain as the stock is trading at around 1200 rupees. We have Mutut Finance as well that she holds at about 1000 odd rupees. The stock is just a little over her buy price, uh, 1038. Uh, what should she be doing in uh, both these counters? I'll, I'll ask specifically about Kajaria first because the housing theme has uh, been backed by a lot of these investors. Do you think uh, this will continue and gains to Kajaria will accrue? Sachidaran, this one's for you. Well, uh, Kajaria, the, uh, if you look at the weekly structure, the weekly structure is uh, still good. In fact, uh, we already saw a breakout from a flag formation on the weekly scale. If you look at the weekly RSI, it is holding well above the uh, 55 mark. So I think uh, she can hold on to her investments. In fact, uh, the stop loss should be placed at around 1180 on a weekly closing basis. And on the higher side, uh, you know, we may see this particular momentum getting carried forward uh, towards 1380, 1390 uh, kind of a zone where its uh, life high is placed. So as of now, the structure of Kajaria is not weak. Uh, probably we may see, uh, you know, it uh, again getting more into a sideways zone. But the uh, structure will only get uh, while uh, the momentum will only dry out in case uh, the weekly closing is established below 1180. But when it comes to Mutut Finance, clearly the trend has been weak uh, to sideways. Even right now, we don't have much evidence of a reversal here. But as of now, you know it has been at a very strong extreme. So probably she can hold on to her existing positions with a stop loss at 940 and probably review the uh, position once uh, we see a breakout above 1150. All right. Uh, the next one comes in again from uh, Bengaluru. Kusuma Raju calls us. Uh, Kusuma, please tell us. Uh, hi, Mangalam. I had a query regarding Viniti Organic. Mm -hmm. uh, I have I have an uh, IPO allotment of Viniti Organics, and I'm holding uh, 500 shares, which has been allotted to me at 10 rupees. Right. I just wanted to know if I could continue holding it, or should I sell 50 percent and book profit? And how does the future of Viniti Organics look? Well, first up, uh, Kusuma, congratulations on uh, this great investment journey that you've undertaken, bought a company at the IPO and continued to hold on and ride through all the gains. And you can see, uh, you know, the results of this uh, for you right up ahead. I mean, 500 shares bought at 10 rupees, currently trading at around 2200 odd rupees. So that's a massive wealth creator sitting with a gain of uh, a fair amount. In fact, this despite uh, the decline that we've seen from the top on Vinati Organics itself, a uh, corpus of 11 lakh rupees made in just one stock out there. Um, Sachidanan, your thoughts on Vinati Organics and what she should be doing, especially after the drawdown that she's seen from the top. And secondly, uh, you know, her alternative is to maybe free up some cash, get 5 lakh rupees. And if she does that, then uh, do you think there are better prospects? All right, we'll uh, just try to reconnect that feed uh, with uh, Sachidanan itself. Uh, we've, uh, we've also tried to connect with uh, Shahina in a bit, but uh, as far as Vinati Organics is concerned, just looking at uh, the move on the stock, uh, another question that I'd uh, you know, ask you, Kusuma, is that uh, is this the only stock that you have in your portfolio? No, I have other stocks as well, which I'm holding for a long term, and I'm generally a long term investor. So, you know, that is something that I would continue holding. But uh, I was particularly interested about Vinity because, you know, I've seen some movement and uh, I wanted to know, you know, if uh, I can book some 50% profit and, uh, you know, use that somewhere else. So you invested in the IPO in Vinity Organics yourself or was it? Uh... Yes, yes. No, it was a Vinity Organics IPO, which I had invested a long time back. Right. For them, the biggest uh, triggers would be, you know, uh, increasing their capacity and uh, the kind of uh, gains that we will see accruing from uh, uh, their IBB as well as uh, the ABB factories uh, that the company will bring out. Unfortunately, you know, we can't establish our connection with the experts. But for now, all I can tell you is, uh, you know, continue to hold on for the time that you do not intend to, you know, or you do not require the money for any particular 
uh, reason because uh, you know we do have uh, some commentary coming in from the management they spoke to us uh, in the past and they said that uh, there would be a lot more specialized chemicals coming to them uh, as we still depend on imports for quite a few raw materials which limits their gains in the past vietnam has been a bigger beneficiary of the china plus one theme can this be the time for india they are putting their capex uh, on stream so let's see how this goes uh, for now so that's all that we can uh, you know talk about vidhi organics right now in absence of uh, the experts being present right now with us but uh, i assure you that uh, the next time you call us we will get you an expert opinion as well with that uh, we come to the end of uh, this edition with the news that the market slipped even further 17500 on the nifty now it's uh, falling uh, uh, like you know a hot knife through butter because we have the sensex now 1200 points lower we have the mid cap index down by 3.5% the nifty bank itself which was sitting with a cut of about a percent 0.2 percent 0.3 has uh, uh, increased its cuts to about 1.7 or percent and it's uh, more of the same you know you're seeing the stocks which were underperforming uh, have fallen a lot more we have the it pack which is at the low point and alongside that we have the other group of stocks which saw some gains are seeing further cuts and some long positions being unwound as soon as we saw the nifty fall below that 17700 mark which was an important support in terms of 20 day moving average as well as the 20 day exponential moving average the cuts have only accelerated so a crucial last hour of trade coming up for you after this short break thank you so much for watching but do remember to email us your queries we'll address them with our experts